Check it, check it, check it. This is your unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day all gone. What's going on? Well, I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right, right now. Go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, your TikTok, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, you name it, we're on it, and including Patreon. Patreon is where you can find our full-length interviews. No clips, just our full-length interviews. But on our YouTube membership, that's where you're going to find the full-length interviews as well, way before the clips start. So if you want to see that before the clips start, just go ahead and sign up for our full-length interviews, all right? Yes, a bunch of y'all be getting in my comments asking me about the damn full interview. I'm tired of it. I'm about to break down right now. I'm tired of it. You got to go on and get that membership and quit acting like you broke. I already know you got money. I've been sneaking and looking at your page. Ghost <laughs> following you. And I see you got a little bread stacked up there putting it to your ear still. Niggas ain't even doing that no more. You still doing it. Check it, man. Hey, man, my guy's here today, man. He don't need no introduction, man. Savage is in the building, a.k.a. Mob God. We don't know sure. what to call him, but... At the end of the day, he here on Boss Talk 101 by way of, I want to say he in Atlanta, but he not originally from Atlanta, right? I'm from Baton Rouge. The boy from Baton Rouge, BR, where all his new, where all his music at. Yeah, wouldn't have it no other way, man. Man, BR, yeah. man. So, hey, man, it's good to meet you, man. Good to have you. Yes, sir. I'm happy to be here. Man, I'm let's talk about it. Here. So, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, um, was you raised with your mom and dad? Yeah, my, my dad actually lives up here, and uh, he, he moved to Dallas probably in the early 80s. So it was just me and my mom and my uh, my stepdad. Um, great man. Um, both of them good guys, you know what I'm saying? But he, my stepdad was a little more street-oriented, you know mm. what I'm saying? So it's kind of like I had the best of both worlds, you know, as far as the hustle, but also the discipline. So your dad was more the disciplinarian. My dad, my stepdad, he was more just a, a life lesson kind of guy, like okay. breaking everything down into terms you can understand on everyday living. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of not sugarcoating things. And my mom the same way. I feel like my mom probably just one of the most. Uh, she's just not gonna play. She, uh, you know, whether it be in the street fighting. You know, I seen her fight grown men. I done seen her put that iron on people. Mm. <laughs> So you know what I'm saying, but 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 at the same time, it's like somebody told me the other day that that knows me and my family. It's like y'all the sweetest people, but y'all crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's that's sound about right. But it's just that you know it's a time for everything. You know what I'm saying. So I feel like you know coming up in Baton Rouge, you had to develop some sort of edge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, just to maintain yourself because it's it's one of them type cities. Man, how old were you when your parents split? Uh, I don't think my parents ever been together, together. in my lifetime. Oh, okay. So, um, they were together, you know, prior to me uh, being born, but my mom had me at like 19. I think mm. her and my dad probably dated three or four years before I was born. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was just, you know, I guess, you know, at that time. Uh, so, you never know, felt like... Um, you wanted your mom and you know some kids they don't understand a lot as a yeah. child so they were like you know why can't my dad be over here with oh, you no, type I, of thing. i've definitely i definitely wanted that you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i definitely wondered about it but it's just that um some things you don't understand as a kid and then some things make you grow up kind of fast mm -hmm. so uh you know me just noticing those type of things i i had to i had to kind of create my own uh comfort zone you know what i'm saying because uh, it can be rough, you know, being raised by someone else um, that's not your, you know, your right. biological father. But I felt like we had got past that point, you know, years later when my brother was born, uh, my stepdad began to treat me more like his own, you know mm. what I'm saying? It so takes that's time. when it felt like home, mm. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But in the beginning, I, I, I didn't really care for it, and I would always wonder, like, why is my mom not with my dad? Did you, you know rebel? Did I rebel? Yeah. And I feel like I've been rebelling my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Give me you know an instance saying? of what you did because of the situation, being there with your stepfather. Give me something that you did that was a cry for help at that time. Um, I think I was just uh, very aggressive as a child because I wasn't really heard at home in the beginning or I wasn't um, 
in my opinion, and even looking back on it, and my mom has even apologized about certain things as I got older. And that shit, well, I don't know if I can say shit, but that releases a lot of uh, frustration off you. It releases a lot of turmoil that you've been holding on to. And like, that you when can you carry can get on. over that trauma mm -hmm. and just kind of develop that, that, that opening line, the opening the lines of communication with, with people that you dear to, I think it just makes the relationship that much more. Uh, but I think it has to do with the generation with that we were in back then because growing up, um, it was a case where a child had to stay in his child place. It wasn't no communicating with no adult at that age. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, um, it's more, let's talk about it. Even although you're a child, let me explain things to you. Yeah. Adults didn't explain anything to you I back then as a, a kid. On their behalf. I know, but yeah, it's just how they were raised right. as well. Well, so y'all yeah, yeah, okay. wrong with that, man. Sometimes kids don't need to get out of here. I don't want you in here while we talking, looking in my mouth. You know, oh, it was no, a, most definitely. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's different. That's different. Yeah, but that's then different. when I get ready to whoop you, then I tell you don't go over there and touch that. Bop, bop, bop. Mm. And I'm going to get your brother too. I think I needed all that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and I don't know why they got me. Yeah. But I needed it because I was tough, man. I was messing up. I know I was even when they called me and didn't catch me. Mm -hmm. So I needed not a communication thing. You know, I get it, Tommy. You know, uh, y'all got that really from people that don't look like us. But I ain't gonna go there. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> well, but I, I do I understand the communication. But I do know that. Sometime, man, where I'm from mm. and, and, and where I needed to be reached at is a place where you can't even explain it. Yeah. Do, does that make sense mm -hmm. to you? Like, you couldn't even explain what the hell. Man, I'm sitting there looking at you. You look like my Uncle Jimmy and my uh, uh, cousin Wayne, them family. You could fit right in their oh, family, yeah, bro. Uh, Hughes's. They Hughes. Hughes. Oh, they out of that decal. But it just, okay. you, am I right? Mm -hmm. like, like, the thing is, though, even him, you know. He remind me of Pim C somewhat. Pimp C? Yeah. Damn, you go, how the hell you got pimp out of, man? Because he, yeah, I don't know. You knew, I see, you, you, I see, yeah, I see a resemblance. You knew Chad. Yeah, yeah I see like a resemblance. Like, when you, when you knew Chad, like, were you, how old was you? I'm, I see you done brought that name uh, up. Boy, that shuts the whole interview down. I probably didn't meet him until, like, my early 20s. But er, I've been a fan of him. How old was you? 20, what, like, 23? 22. Like 20 Young. Yeah. You look back now, and you be like, but I don't it's know. It's just that, man, pimp was just, uh. Or maybe the glasses. Oh my God, <laughs> he was just a phenomenon. Yeah, you know, think he was. about coming from small town Louisiana. Cause I always tell people we can't we claim pimp because he's from Crowley, but a lot of people claim you know pimp because he they, he rep PA, yeah. but he from Crowley. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you know you when you come from under that lineage, we got a lot of good musicians that just came out of Louisiana, and then uh, you know him developing that in Texas even going to school, singing and all that type of stuff. Just, we followed a lot of the same paths and I didn't realize it until I started researching a lot of the stuff that Pimp did and what he listened to because it, being my favorite, that was my favorite artist, favorite producer. Man, favorite yours artist. and mine both. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's not even close. Like when people ask me, well, what's your favorite album of all time? And there's so many albums. I'm gonna say Riding Dirty every time. Me too. <laughs> Front to back. And me that's too. how I ended up meeting Pimp because I thought the guy, um, my boy Smoke D, shout out to Smoke, Smoke D is talking to all the interludes on Riding Dirty. I mm. thought that was Bun B, bro. I thought that was Bun for the long time. It I sounds just like Bun. I thought like it was Bun. So it's it's actually Smoke D. Smoke D was kind of like an unofficial member, uh, but he spent so much time in and out of jail during the time that they was trying to get up and running. But Pimp was actually going to visit dude. And when he would visit him, he was like, okay, well, here go this, these tapes. You know, he, he was giving them them tapes, and he had a recorder in there, so... Pimp just ended up breaking it down into interludes, and that's how I ended up making Riding Dirty. So, wow. long story short, that's who introduced me to uh, Pimp. When he's he's like, well, when I when I get out of jail, I'm gonna hook you up with Pimp. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And shit, man, I'm talking about he did everything to the T like he said he was gonna do. And so the first time I ever met Pimp, I'm going to the hotel in Atlanta, uh, the 12. This is the time he was hanging with that big seven, four foot uh, bodyguard, be rabble lot. Yeah. So yeah, he was running the show, and um, you know, I was coming off the elevator, and Pimp, Pimp was coming off, and I'm coming on the elevator to co come to his room. So we bumped, like meeting up. I'm talking about for the first time ever. So I put my hand out the dap, and he's like, "Man, I know who you is, nigga." Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a video, a video on BET Uncut, and uh, he used to watch the video on Uncut. He's like, "Yeah, I know who you is, nigga." You savage, BET Uncut. I've been checking you out. 
I like what you're doing, you know. So, you know, and she, from there, you know what I'm saying? Just to have your favorite artist like, know who you, you, are, know who you are, are and you trying to introduce yourself. Like, at that point, I could have quit then. And I'm like, shit, mm -hmm. I, my job done. Yeah. Because just, you know, just, just listening to that dude so long and uh, I'm talking about, man, just from tell me something good all the way to, you know what I'm saying, the dirty money to all the stuff, like the stuff he was doing when he first came on from jail even, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't think people realize how how much he played a role where he do everything and then Bond just got to come put verses down. Yeah, 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 I hear that a lot. You know I hear that a lot. And that's what I do now to this day. So even when I work with Boosie, Webby, all these guys I work with, I'm going to pretty much do the majority of the work. You just got to show up, put your verse down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, when you're a studio rat like that, it just make you want to go, go, go. So I get that from him as far as, you know, he used to say he tried to do three songs a day. Shit, I'm probably doing six, seven a day. Mm. You know wow. what I'm saying? I'm talking about from making the beat to writing the hook to getting the song together. So like last year, uh, between myself and my artists, I got about five artists on my roster. Uh, we dropped maybe 150 songs, but quality songs, you know what I'm saying? It ain't where we just rushing stuff out. I'm the person that sit in the studio all day and tweak and, you know what I'm saying, make the changes or cut this out or take it out. And you have to love it in order to be that good at something like Let that. Let me just stop you for a minute. You know, I always stop people. You know, I think I'm bad like that. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop mob God and just say my little piece. You you going to just say I do seven a day. Pimp did how many three? He said he did three. But that. yours ain't but two minutes long, though, Mob God. That's true. Stop playing with me, man. That's true, but you know what? The the the, the market has changed. <laughs> it did. And, and we, you know, even take something like three six things. You know that song yeah. three six. Doom, doom, man, doom, doom, doom. People ain't finna sit there and listen to three three verses no more of sixteen bars. Oh, that don't went hard, dog. They gonna listen to that. Oh, yeah, old still to that. this day, like Is we. It's hard. They gonna it's listen. It's still hard to this day, but it's that the the attention. Span seems to have changed and it's like one thing I try to do is make music that's gonna last so even in Baton Rouge you might go to the club to this day and I get on the DJs about not playing new shit but you'll go to the club to this day you may hear five to ten records I produced maybe ten years ago wow still you know well, what I'm saying wipe me down remix had a Remix. They all had a bunch of. Yeah, but, I remember that. <laughs> they all had a bunch of different remixes. They, yeah. they all had a lot of people on it. Did it? It did. <laughs> it did. But I mean, they, that 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 record did good for a lot of people as far as just exposure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was around the time I was still at Trill. Mouse did that track, by the way. Um, but that was around the time I was still at Trill. And when we was working on them songs, a lot of that early stuff, man, I either got recorded in Motel Six. <laughs> or Super 8 or, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even big studios. It's just because we used to get them boys out of town to focus. So if they were still in the city, they're gonna run around, you know what I'm saying? So now, I wanna ask you something, cause it keep, it keep coming back to me. Boosie said he wouldn't have never signed to, uh, what'd you just name it? Trill. Trill, he wouldn't have never signed it if he didn't know. He thought Pimp C owned it. I he mean, said if did. he said if he had if he had a new that Pimp C didn't own it, yeah. he wouldn't have never signed to it. We well, how did. would you think that and not know that he don't own it? You, For one, you know, they coined the term trio. That was something that was correct. Something they did. Made, you know what I'm saying? So trio entertainment and Pimp, you know, like repping and, and waving the flag. But he really was trying to do them a favor and help put them on. Like, yeah, he had a hand in it, but he wasn't no like every day type of guy like he's like okay well whatever y'all working on I'm gonna sign on it or if you need a verse for something whatever whatever you know I'm gonna sign off on it and do it and I feel like he helped them in that realm you know what I'm saying who was the one that made that uh, is uh uh what was the two guys name Mel and Mel and Turk Turk okay how did how did you even meet them I met Mel and Turk through uh DJ Wookie Wookie very instrumental in so many of our uh, careers from Baton Rouge because he was one of the first people in Baton Rouge that had a studio. Okay. So like when I'm when I was a kid, I helped start TBG. So that's like right out of my neighborhood. So that's you know all those guys was my older homies like Big Chill, Ivy that Boosie always talking about, uh, Yacht. And those are like the big three. And so they was like the older street guys out the neighborhood. Me, I was beat dude, you know, helping write songs or whatever. But them was the first dudes actually putting money into 
buying equipment for me or, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. buying studio time or doing whatever we need to do to keep studio time, you know what I'm saying? So I can't ever turn my back on that. And even to this day, like I got Ivy's son, uh, Ivy Jr., I had got him signed a couple years ago, but I'm helping manage him and um, still, you know, just helping him rock out and, and develop as an artist as well. But um, I think CeeLo going to jail is what made Boosie go to Trill because, you know, Loke had him signed. And after Loke went to jail, then he started running with us with TBG and, and Ivy. So he, you know, I did, like, I'm on, I'm on Boosie's first mixtape. You on his first? I'm one. on his very first. I got. I bought that. Yeah, and um, I, I forgot the name of the. Track. I ain't. I, I I just remember because because you know that's pimp all. The pimp is the one I felt like conveyed and brought him in too. Right. So right. when I got it, it was a. I, I ain't gonna tell you who, but somebody burnt that CD and sold it to me. Cause I don't remember <laughs> nothing on it but yeah. just Boosie on that old. Yeah. Uh, uh, him and uh. You know, I, I want to say, was Pimp featured on that? I think Pimp had he something was, on there. Uh, I think he came in on, like, where them dollars at around that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, remember, yeah, you know yeah, that? I remember that. And then he had a uh, a couple more songs with Boosted, but they got leaked. And so that's why I never came out officially as regular songs. Um, he had, like, two two projects get leaked. And, man, that's, that's another thing, too. Like, as a phenomenon, Boosted was, like, one of them people that the artists, I mean, uh, the people in the city would listen to his unmixed music. And wow. it could be it could be sounding like trash. I never heard that the, before, the but that's hard. That's hard. But the people in the city wanted it they so still bad with they it. was still gonna bump it. So like even though leak projects was getting more love than a lot of people. That's why I really I felt like it did him a disservice when he finally pulled out a real album because a lot of those um a lot of his harder songs got leaked on the projects beforehand. And then they ended up having to do the wipe me down to try to get him another buzz to try to get that album selling, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What, I'm gonna be real with you for a minute, Mob God, man. When you think about, I don't know, sometimes I think that the early on people, and I say this a lot, um, the the masterpiece, the, the, the Birdman and Slims, the mm. Turkey Males, the, the Southerners, man, because it's a lot different coming out in the South. I feel like a lot of times they were learning when they started and stuff. And I think a lot of times people mad or upset with them about certain things they went through on those labels. But I think they was learning, bro. I think, I know they was. Well, at the end of the day, taking something that's not yours ain't never a learning curve on that. I get it. I it get it. But, learning curve but that. if you just started something today mm -hmm. and you be like, E man, I want you to come help me with this. And I be like, yeah, I'll come help you. Now, I ain't for to give you nothing, but I'm going to give you 5%. And that whole blow. And I be like, damn, man, I did most of the work. You didn't know that hole was going to blow. You didn't know. So when it blow, am I a bad dude for because you only got 5%? Uh, I don't know. Cause the world gonna be like, man, that's you, that's if, you that's know, either, 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 if I eat, it don't work. I'm gonna say it like this: if you can, if you're okay with that, knowing that you're getting the bulk of something you had nothing to do with producing, then that tells us what kind of person you are. But what do I do now? You mean just make it right? Is that all you saying? Because I can make it right, or right. I don't have to. I'm I'm with I'm with uh, Steve Madden and Mark Cuban. Them now, I really don't have to come back. Yeah. Make it right. You understand what I'm saying? Make it right. It ain't, and okay, for example, okay. And I brought that up because people I say, know they get they, these new deals. Yeah. Now people are understanding independence and all that, but when you go back to them times, you you when you look at these guys, and I talk about the South because I'm from the South, uh -huh. when you look at these guys, I, I don't know, you know, nobody that did it better than, than, than P and Birdman and uh, J Prince, J Prince first. But when you start looking at how people feel about the deals they was in a lot of times. Yeah, I don't know people, nobody with a deal from J. Prince that that was satisfied with their deal. I, but n none of ever, them. Ever, That's a track record. So what you have to do is start looking at people's track record, right? And so even if you want to take somebody like Birdman, even last year I was proud of Birdman for the simple fact that a lot of people started coming out and saying, yeah, he paid me off. Even Birdman was like, yeah, I took care of this. I you know what I'm saying? Because he had, he had became notorious for not paying people, right? And we know he got the money to pay people. So the fact that he made it right, 
and that's, this man down there, a billionaire, if he can find it in his mind to and compel to make it right, knowing he didn't have to pay and or got away without paying, that says a lot right there about growth. If we talk about man, I growth. love Birdman. You know I ain't saying? gonna lie, I always did, and even when too. he hadn't paid. Me too. I, I, even when he hadn't, I don't Yo, give a damn about none of that. For real. All I'm telling you is what I just told you earlier mm -hmm. is being a young hustler who come from the streets, who knew. Had a lot of money. They came from nothing. No, I'm talking. And me, they I had. Came I nothing. came from nothing. Right. But then I think about some of the stuff I did early on with the money that is quite ridiculous now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, you just learning even to have money. You don't. You never had it before. So all I'm saying is, and I agree with you so much on the fact of he made it. He making it he right making now. It right. That's and hard, that, that bro. Is, That's hard, your man. Intellectual property that came from here. Yeah. That ain't come from Turk, that ain't come from Mel, that ain't come from nobody, you see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if this is how you eat, and there's a there's publishing set aside for the label, take your portion of the publishing and give it out. I mean, keep yours and make sure everybody else get theirs, but what they was doing is like hoarding the publishing, putting everything under one publishing, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter who made the song, no matter who wrote it, no matter who featured on it, everything going under one publishing, and then they decide when they feel like giving somebody money. I don't, okay, give me, a instance, give me an instance where you felt like you was a part of something that didn't, you didn't get the, you didn't, you didn't get the recognition for. I never told this story. And I know people say that on interviews all the time. Everybody say that. But it's time to tell it, mother. <laughs> okay. Because I, because I know you're a Pimp C fan, Oh, yeah, right? I'm a definitely right, a Pimp so, C fan. So they had, a, they had a, uh, another artist, I mean, another producer on Trio, BJ. So me and BJ, we riding from Baton Rouge to Atlanta, going to do some work, right? Now, he telling me about the Flies of Eagle idea the whole trip. You know, he talking about the hook. It's like, yeah, man, we need to do a beat. We'll, we'll, we'll get pimp on there. Sing flies of eagle, da, da, da. So, okay. I get to the I get to Atlanta. And this around the time where, you know what I'm saying, uh, MySpace and all that was like about to go out the door, but it was still a thing. Yeah. So BJ, he met a little something off of there. He chilling with Homegirl. The dude was dating one of the CEO's sister at the time. Though. Okay. So you really ain't had no business doing that. But me thinking I'm being silent, I'm like, man, that ain't my business. Exactly. By the time we come back home from Atlanta, he telling Turgon Mel, yeah, man, I did that Flies of Eagle beat. We need to put Pimp on that woo 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 woo. Mind you, he ain't touched the keyboard the whole time. Damn. So I did the beat. Pimp came in and laced the hook. But he changed some of the hook. So that kind of relinquished your creative input to it because now you ain't do the beat. Pimp on the hook. Webby got a verse, Fox got a verse, you feel me? At the end of the day, they made me split the publishing or the credits with him like he did something for, on the beat, but he didn't. Damn. And that was really like, that was like the last straw for me. You were done. And that's when I, yeah, like that's when I just quit. What was that conversation like though when you when they did that? Did you oh, even no, talk I, to him about no, it? No, I called him a fucking liar in the, in the, in the meeting. You and who I was in that meet? Me, Turk, Mel, BJ. BJ was there. Yeah, I'm an honest person. So he knew that he didn't do nothing on it, but still, still didn't want to. He still rolled with it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's like, no, man, I did some more. Oh, I made the woo woo woo. And like, you, I'm like, what's I say? What sound did you play if you helped make the beat? And he never could come with a what he contributed to the beat. So for everybody listening, when you hear flies of eagle. With, with Pimp and Webby, that's all me. You now did he, that whole he thing. He came with the idea for the song. Yeah. But he wanted Pimp to say certain stuff, and Pimp changed and wrote his own version of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I say, that would that takes that takes him out the mix now no. because you know you ain't you ain't right, you ain't do the beat. So and I just left a, a sour taste in my that, mouth. That, and yeah, I know I know he looked out for dude because that was the dude was dating his sister. Um you know, so I feel like that's probably what, like, keeping it in the family or whatever. But they also had um, the leak CD was another CD that Boosie put out. And this was around the time where he stopped turning in music to Trill because he he realized they owed a lot of money to him. Yeah. So me and him just started doing mixtapes on the side. You know, I was producing, like, the whole mixtape. And so what they was doing was taking certain songs from those mixtapes that we put out, repackaging it putting it under a dummy label and throwing it out and keeping the money. 
But was that so? You tell me, integrity wise, does that sound? No, I, I don't agree with that. Okay, but I am saying, starting out young, it's tough trying to understand the business. That's all I was saying. But I understand you gonna have more skin in the game when it's your, it's your your stuff, your product. Yeah, your, they made me. They made me never want to sign to anyone again. Ever. That's how bad because. You know, in music, bro, you may you may only get one shot to shine, or you may only get one chance to really be that person, right? So if anybody takes your hard work or your intellectual property, and they and they make more off it than you, that's never a win in your situation. No, nah, I get it. So now I'm looking at it, my catalog, my publishing. It's not mine. It's my children's now. You see what I'm saying? So when I'm gone, this is what's gonna still pay them. And that's important to try to have all your business lined up, just like you wouldn't want to pass without having life insurance. You see what I'm saying? That's right. Same way. That's like passive income. So if you got all the, and especially it's easier to make money with music now because of the streams. A lot of people don't like it, but it's easier to make your money back now. So if you have, let's say you have one song pop next month, that makes all your old songs that you did just that much more relevant now. That's right. Because you have this one song popping now, they want to figure out, okay, well, where this guy came from? Oh, he got good music. Oh, he jamming all the time. Okay. So that's why it's important to own your stuff because you never know what's going to be the one. Wow. So have you, do Turkey Mail, do they know that you weren't good with the deal and what everything that happened? Oh, yeah, they know, man. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't cut corners. I don't, I don't hide how I feel about things. Another thing that too that made me leave was, uh, you remember uh, when they did the Ghetto Stories movie? Yeah. Man, they wanted me to play a crackhead, bro. Mm. I was fresh out the military, bigger than everybody had to lay. I'm talking about in shape, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what the hell I'm going to play a crackhead in the movie for? Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was just, it was it was, it was, was time to dip. You know did you ever saying? meet Steve Bilo? I haven't. You didn't? He was down there with them too. It was uh, uh, probably was different time, and that may have been was. after you left. Yeah, it probably was because he definitely. That's how he met Pimp was uh, through that situation. Oh, really? Down there, yeah. Okay. Because I guess Pimp was really, really cool with them. He was like that was yeah, like was. family for him. He was. That's crazy, man. Because like I said, being from Baton Rouge, how, how y'all got like y'all crazy down there with it, man? You got NBA young boy, man. You got. Uh man, it's a bunch of niggas. Got you, got, Gates, you got Gates, you got Boosie, Boosie Webby, Webby, Fox, Fox. Big Ed, Lil Fat Rest in Peace. Lil Fat Rest was, in Peace. And that was my baby, right? That was that was my baby. I call him my baby because that's I had fat, you know, 10, 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? How old were you him. older than how old, how many uh, years was y'all old? Like I'm a, I'm probably about ten years older than fat. So did you, you went to his but funeral and everything. You I didn't was, go to his funeral. I you didn't? No. Fuck no. I couldn't. It, it was bad? Uh, I was that close to him. You couldn't deal with it? I couldn't deal with it. Nah, I didn't want to do it. Uh, he actually died at the hospital where my first daughter was born. So that's crazy to me even more. So you know what I'm saying? And um, had, How long before when he passed away had you spoken to him? No, I, I even, this is the thing, and, I'm, and this is just a testament to show how close we were. Even when I fell out with Tria, that never affected my relationship with Fat. So even his brother, you know what I'm saying? I'm still cool with him. Like, you know what I'm saying? It never affected. And, and at the end of the day, they was able to draw the line between personal and business. You know what I'm saying? And they know what's going on with what. Okay, let's go back to you first meeting Fat because that, that, that's, that's the thing in itself. He was so popular but didn't even live out his success. Right. Like, when did you first meet him and had he ever been in music before you met him? Uh, he was just hanging around, you know, he was just always hanging around Trill, always hanging around the studio. But then when he wanted to rap and finally started, you know, wanting to get in it, and he personally said, yeah, I want this dude to help me with my Savage. Stuff. He said, you my producer. That's what he used to call me, like, you my producer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, even his first song, I don't even know where I could find it. It was his song called New Kicks. I think DJ Chill might have it. Uh, shout out to DJ Chill. DJ Chill might have it, be one of the only people with it, but that was his first song that he had put out and I did the beat for that. So when I say day one of his career, then I was around, you know what I'm saying? Wow, so when you seen him, how was it just dealing with him? 
I mean, with me, it was it was always easy. I mean, he was a jokester, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the only thing that was. He was going to play all day, laughing all day, joking all day, smile on his face, practical jokes, the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? Just a good dude, but I feel like, because uh, I would have to reel him in sometime on the street shit, you know what I'm saying? And be like, hey, you tripping. But he got this, he had this little fro just like way. But why'd he get this fro? Is that a bad rouge thing? <laughs> yeah, right? Some this Bob. damn fro, fro. They both had that little yeah, fro, they man. Call it the Bob back home. It's just, you know, you grow it out and just tape the side. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Whatever you go do with it, just let it roll. You know what I'm saying? But uh, even, even somebody like YB, though, young boy, that's, you could tell. Fat was his favorite artist, and he always be saying stuff like that as far as how he looked up to Fat. Fat had that effect on a lot of the young cats that's popular today. He had that effect on them, and I feel like he had his own movement going. You know, then, uh, you know, it's a lot of people that are successful from Baton Rouge today are standing on the shoulders of the people that did it yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So without, without Fat, it wouldn't be no young boy, but without C it wouldn't be no Boosie. You see what I'm saying? Without without uh me, it wouldn't be no leveling mister. You know what I'm saying? Like all these guys, it's like we you know, you have to continue to build on things. So I heard somebody say uh the other day from New Orleans, uh, no rap cap podcast. He was saying that dudes from Baton Rouge always wanted to be like cats from New Orleans and we always want to do their style and I always want to come down. And that's the furthest thing from the truth because we don't work so hard to build our own legacy and our own image. Even if you listen to the music and uh, the verbiage, the language is different. You guys are, this is a lot of talent down there, bro. That Even in Baton Rouge, even in New Orleans, even in just Texas, the South period, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. talent, bro, period. when you start dealing with this stuff. Mm. Even Mississippi, a lot of Mississippians have been coming up here, too, yeah. you know, uh, doing interviews, man. It's just a lot of, man, you got Big Crit down there. You got David Banner come from down there in Mississippi. Like, and man, I had to make, I had to make Shannara like Crit, because Shannara didn't want Crit. She say he 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 try to sound too much like Chad. <laughs> Is that I'm what like, she said? So you and Shannara y'all were yo, cool. we're real cool. Yeah, to I this day, I haven't talked to her in a minute because I was mad that she ain't give, let me do a beat on that last project. Mm -hmm. Okay, but every song that got on that project, she called me before and was like, "What you think about this song? What you think about that song?" So I damn near helped put that project together. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was mad I ain't had no beats on that motherfucker because you calling me to approve every song or asking me what I think about every song. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But it ain't so no bad respect, blood. She, she it ain't no bad what blood. you thought. Right. It ain't no bad blood. It's just that, you know, I wanted to help do some beats on that mug too as well as help put the motherfucker together. But she didn't really, she wasn't feeling crit at first and because she said he used to try to sound too much. And I'm like, nah. I say he influenced by Chad, but I don't think he purposely trying to sound just like him. I say, Crit Raw, he got his own little thing going. I was like, you got to check him out. And eventually she ended up, you know, getting some work from him and he ended up making the album. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he made the album. Uh, uh, but that's my boy, man. Like, like yeah, I, I want to interview the uh, Big Crit. Uh, what about, um, like, let's get back to Baton Rouge, man. Do you think, uh, what kind of relationship do you think, and it's just your opinion, mm. uh, Cash Money, uh, Birdman got with NBA Youngboy? Uh, you see what I'm saying? I think... it's something to this. Why be not the kind of person that going to follow too much of what other people say? Say, you're correct. So when he sees somebody that he can relate to or halfway respect, I think that's why him and Birdman got that relationship. Because they cool as hell. Yeah, and uh, even when... And, I, and I, I'm and i all for respecting the elders, and I feel like, you know, especially somebody like Jay Prince, you got to tilt your head to do, right? But I kind of sided with Young Boy on that situation. Oh, he I tried seen to, that. I seen that. You know what I'm saying? Where he kind of tried to extort him a little bit, like, "Yeah, we got your keys." Like, man, you could have just called me instead of it being publicized on a video. So, you know what I'm saying? Like this internet, the day of the internet, then kind of made things a little corny. 
And I think we got to kind of reel it back in yeah. and be men again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And really just set the, you know, you got to differentiate internet life and real life. Even though they coincide and clash all the time because a mistake in the internet streets will definitely kill you in the real streets. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just that we got to stop doing everything about making it about the internet. And if it was a situation where you just trying to mentor a young black brother, then you wouldn't have did it like that. Mm. Same way I go back to saying, you know how you were saying, well, they just starting out in the business. They trying to learn as they go. At the end of the day, even if we working out a pack, right? Let's say we working out the pack and you the brick man. And I come and get some bricks and you say you gave me two. Then it shouldn't be one and a half in this bag and you still expecting the payment for two of them. You feel me? So it's just about integrity at the end of the day. And if you're going to mentor, do it the right way. If you're going to be a, a person to be looked up to, do something worth looking up to. Don't do corny shit. You know what I'm saying? This internet has been a big deal for everybody trying to understand how to maneuver in this realm. Like, uh, it's not the same as everyday living. We know that. Right. You can get on here and, and, and it's kind of like when you used to call people back, we didn't have internet, you call people and hang up in their face. <laughs> It's the same thing, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like you can't really get to a nigga, right? It's just like when we were kids, we called and asked a nigga, is, is your icebox running? They say, yeah, well, you better go catch it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, like this, is, this is the internet. Like, niggas ain't really able to get to you. Mm -hmm. So I can hang up on your face and then just run. Or, or, or nigga knock it. Yeah. Run. Mm -hmm. That's what nigga doing on the internet, man. It's just <laughs> and they and they doing that because I'm and I'm gonna tell you why. Being that I've been inside the machine lately, as far as like the major labels and stuff. Because like I said two years ago, I got Ivy Junior signed to APG. APG is kind of like Atlantic. Um, Mike Karen, that's Mike Karen company. He signed Cupid Shovel. He signed Trill. He signed a bunch of Louisiana acts over the past few years. But being on the inside of that machine, they encourage people not directly but they encourage people to stay in beef or have uh mischief going on because wow. it's the numbers yeah you see what i'm saying that's whether, crazy whether whether good or bad is the publicity that they want from it so think about it if if you getting 200 250 streams 250,000 streams on a beef and you got an album coming out that's 250 we save you know what i'm saying to yeah. try to get you looked at just because you in something you know what i'm saying yeah and that's crazy. So I wanted to um, go back, because you never did say, how did you get into the music game? Like, did you grow up with a passion for music? Yeah, I've been doing, I've been, my grandmother on my dad's side, she actually did the Bobby Jones gospel show like three, four times. Wow. As a choir director, her choir performed on BET. So this was like in the 80s, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So my grandmother, she was cold-blooded with the music, writing, creating, you know, composing. And so there were always instruments around everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you're going to pick up something, you're going to play piano, drums, guitar. It's something around here for you to do. So you say you bored, go pick something up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much how I got into it. I was reading before I went to school. That was, that was something dope my mom kind of instilled in me. She would read to me every night before bed. And that taught me how to read early. So by mm -hmm. the time I made it to kindergarten, I was reading to the class. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When it's nap time, I read the story, then wow. I take a nap. You know what I'm saying? So writing has never been a thing. Reading has never been a thing. And I just married them to music. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when what was your first um, music gig? When like What was the first opportunity you got that when I first got some recognition was probably the the uh that first song Loose says a goose don't get me started. <laughs> nah, it was on that wasn't it? it was on Boosie first. You uh, did that one too, first, didn't you? No, Mouse did that one. Oh, okay. I, I thought did, you did, did Loose as a goose. That devil get up off me. I did that did, one. You did that one? Yeah. Yeah. That was a hard one too. Yeah, I sat with that one, man. But y'all niggas were that. hell down there. I built that one from scratch, man. But, but how um, did you get your first one? Wookie. DJ Wookie, I was telling you about he uh Cause he 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 suggested the beat to Boosie, and and I've been knowing Boosie since a kid. Uh, oh, okay. We played ball together. Oh, okay. And um, yeah. But as far as the music, we wasn't doing music together mm -hmm. until that point. And even then, since then, you've done a lot more work with him. Since then, I probably done maybe fifty, sixty beats for him. 
Wow. To this day, yeah. Wow, that's, that's hard. hard. Yeah, because like I said, when he when he stopped turning in music for Trill, then we probably did about five mixtapes back to back to back to back to back. Mm. And that that even that even we even had to have a discussion for that to happen because I had got word that he was upset that I was doing beats for a dude named Nussie. I remember that I'm the one that popularized Nussie. Like he was Nussie was kind of his music was trash. And they were, he had they a street were, reputation. I remember that. You feel me? And why was he mad? They were into it or something? Yeah, yeah, they was, yeah. They was I knew about that. that was big, man. That, that was, was big. Man. That was big in the city. And so he and I kind of, uh, he kind of felt some kind of way about it to the point where I had to call. Him. I'm like, man, what's up, bro? You th- they saying you don't want to fuck with my beats because I'm doing beats with this. Yeah, I don't really fuck with it. Woo, woo, woo. I say, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me and you. You know, we got our own relationship. So I'm like, do me and you have a personal problem? Nah, nah, we good. And so after we cleared that up, then shit, we went on a mixtape run. You oh, know so y'all saying? started back working after we the conversation. Went on, we went on old mixtape run. That only proves that proved the conversation. That proves all, a conversation. It, all it takes is right. a pick just up a, a phone call. Don't jump on his social media. Right. Back oh, back now, then no. it wasn't really just there living was no like that. Media, yeah, it, was it was social, social media, media, but it wasn't a lot like now. Right. 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 But, but I'm but just showing a how. It, yeah, that was a conversation. Right. Man, that's big. And I feel like I could talk. Man, I'm I'm not a person that's afraid to say whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like if you don't, you can implode and instead mm-hmm. of explode. Exactly. You'll hold on to things so long to the point where it'll piss you off. And now you, you know, they say anger is a punishment on yourself. So if you angry all the time, you're really just punishing yourself because the person that probably got you angry ain't even thinking about why they right. angered you. Then That's you have real. sometimes you have people yeah, around you that treat you a certain way and you know that they're angry, but you don't know what they're angry about. It could be something that happened 10 years ago right. and you wonder why they treat you like that. Yep. You and know when what they I mean? can easily just put it on the table and let's sort it out. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Man, uh, BG about to come home. That's, That's big, man. That's my dog. BG about to come home. They, yeah. I'm hearing Birdman them saying that it, it, they got this, that you know, they put to do something together. Well, that was the the crazy thing is I done three on BG last official project. Okay. Not only did he let me produce them, I co-wrote them. Wow. And 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 that's another one of my favorite artists. Like you know what I'm saying, Pimp. BG. BG. You feel me? Just on my on my roster, personal, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying so when I got a chance to work with him and like this dude in the studio really caring about my input, really asking, "Hey, Savage, you think I ought to do that over?" I'm like, "Yeah, man, do X, Y, and Z." So when I'm working with Lil Ray Ray, and Lil Ray Ray don't want to listen, but BG want to know everything I got for the input on this song, then damn, why I'm fucking with Lil Ray Ray? If I'm trying to help Lil Ray Ray get along, you see what I'm saying? So it's like some people don't respect your experience and your and your resume and some people do you know and sometimes it's just the person personally because when i met bg he was a so fun loving i mean so down to earth super he was downer. super nice you know somebody say let's take a picture he's like come on and he's BG coming home y'all yeah I they mean, had planned that before he went to jail and turk um turk they was waiting on turk to come on and then if you notice, BG went in right around the time Turk mm-hmm. came on. But they had already agreed to do it. And hopefully, man, I'll have uh, the opportunity to produce some new stuff for him when he come on. Well, yeah, been, on have y'all been talking? I ain't talked to him in a minute. I've been talking to his people. He been gone 12 years. I ain't 13 years. We mm-hmm. did that picture. See, that's right before he went in. Mm-hmm. Right there on that picture right there by T.I. right With the there. red hat. With the red hat. Yeah. He just, that's right before he went in. I said, you got a lot of people. Because I asked that nigga, I said, man, you going to be here. He was there two days in a row with them. He's like, man, they they, they paying over here. They, they cashing the check over here, baby. <laughs> He's like, nigga, as long as they keep paying, I'm going to be yeah. staying, you know. But yeah, that was, that was definitely a pleasure to work with him. Uh, DMX was another one down to earth. Mm. Yeah, you work with right DMX? With DMX. In what song flesh. did you produce for DMX? Uh, it was a song for a local dude that came. Uh, we had DMX in Baton Rouge on some random night, bro. Really? Some random night, and all of a sudden, I get a call like, yeah, man, DMX in town. Ooh, we about to bring him out of the studio. And I'm like, I'm not believing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, shit, if he come, you know, cool, let's do it. So, man, DMX shows up, and, I, and I'm talking about a bunch of cats I've never seen come to the studio like these like some hardcore on the block got whatever you want type Does he, you know it, what I'm did he have that high energy all the time he was very high energy he came in he was like 
What's good, B? You good? You good? <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's happening, bro? Yeah, I'm good. You ready, B? Do it out, B. So he get in the booth, right? And so like, people from Baton Rouge don't really care about a lot. Like they they not starstruck. They don't really trip on stuff like that. But when I say these knuckleheads that's <laughs> straight from the street was glued to every single word that he's saying in the booth, just watching him work. I'm like, man, I say, man, y'all niggas ain't never came to the studio while I'm in this bitch working, you know what I'm saying? And not everybody, I'm talking about the whole, and, and just watching man. him like a like an animal in the zoo, they was just so mesmerized. But he walked around the booth like three, four times. He growled a little bit. Then he was like, let's get it. And he freestyled a verse. Wow. So he probably did about a good 12 before he messed up. I punched him back in, he finished the four. But like, yeah, just the whole entire time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just thinking to myself, like somebody, cause you gotta realize that dude had two platinum albums back to back in 98. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he could, you know, it wasn't no compare, it wasn't no Jay-Z, nobody was comparing to that guy, you know what I'm saying, at that time. So, you know, just to have somebody like that that has reached that height musically, and as well as a lot of the other people that I work with that are just flat out considered great artists to be in the same company with them and to be able to say I've worked with them, it says to me that I'm doing the right thing. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's huge, man, to yeah. be them work with them guys. Mm -hmm. There were some of the names that you've worked with, man, who would you like to work with? I haven't worked with uh, Ross. I, I wouldn't mind doing something with Ross. Oh. I like Ross. Why that nigga that bad too, He know too, how to pick boy. beats, though. That's his thing. He know what, what worked for him, and I think he stick to that. I wouldn't mind. And I crit. Like Big crit? Yeah. I, hey, I crit. think I, I've been trying to get, I ain't never even talked to the nigga, man. I done talked to a lot of people, and I know a lot of people, and I done reach out to this man. I done reach up crit. I done reach out to you a few times, bro. I don't know if you see Boss Talk 101, nigga, but... We here, nigga. We Come in the south. It's yeah. dirty, dirty south till I die, nigga. You know what I'm Yeah, I wouldn't mind putting. Like, I, like, I love his music. To put something together, but you know how when you meet up with somebody, like, yeah, we got to do something. Y'all be And it just never, it never. Came. How was never his energy came. though? Oh, it was good. Good, was good guy. Good. good. He seemed like it. Yeah, I like met Crit a couple of times. Good he was dude. just down there Matter with Lil fact, Kiki last. I, I think last week, him and uh, be legit. I, I, I even be linking up with be legit. That's somebody else I want to work. Oh with. yeah. And, and let me tell that story while we talking about Savage, right? So before we had CeeLo, we was bumping the click. Oh yeah. So yeah, like 40 was as big in Baton Rouge as a current artist is right now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we was bumping 40, Be Legit, D-Shot, uh, Sally Cell, MCA, all them dudes, right? So I got the name Savage from Be Legit. Really? Because Be Legit was the Savage. It was Be Legit the Savage. So that was one of my favorite artists. I just took Savage. I was just Savage, you see what I'm saying? And um, the thing about it was, even around the time when I got the trio, I was already Savage. Mm. When I did my first song with Webby and a dude named Handy, rest in peace, it was a song called Old Schools, which is a classic at home. But I'm on that, I'm on that last, I'm on that second verse, and I ate their ass up. But I'm on that second verse, and I was Savage then, you see what I'm saying? So this before Savage Life won all that, so I really? was already, you see what I'm saying? So people like might look at it like, you know, like somebody might have influenced me, but I got that straight from Be Legit, and other people ran with the Savage. You know what I'm saying? So, so was you the first one to come out with yeah, the Savage? Yeah. In in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And and you can look at the the video on BET Uncut. You know what I'm saying? I was one of the first people from Baton Rouge to have a video, and on my name, my name is Savage. So, Savage. Yeah. When you was Savage, because we know you changed your name. But uh, yeah, only because, and I didn't even want to change it, but Pimp asked me to change it because. So of, Pimp C asked you to change your name? Because he fucked with Webby. And that was out of respect to Webby. And what? he wanted me to change that. Because he assumed that Webby did it first, but I ain't really have no problem with it because I know I did it first, but I know that's his homeboy too, you feel what I'm so saying? So he asked you because Webby had did Savage Life? One in, one at the time. Well, yeah, he, you know, Webby was calling himself Webby Trill Entertainment, Young Savage. Young Savage. Yeah. And and he was like... And, and at first, I didn't... And at first, I didn't change my shit. I'm like, man, fuck that. I ain't changing my shit. Fuck that. And I'm like starting to think about it. I'm like, okay, well, let me, you know, try to some rebranding and um, see if I can, you know what I'm saying, separate myself from it because at the end of the day, I didn't want 
my legacy to be tied to nobody else's. I want my own thing. You see what I'm saying? So when I came up with the Mob God thing, it's just mine over both. But I was growing as a person. What year did you do it? Uh, I've been Mob God for about 10 years now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was about that time. So <laughs> yeah. Savage Life 1 and 2. I have had this conversation. These are your homeboys, uh, people that I say homeboy because y'all from Baton Rouge. Mm. Um, Boosie never had a project bigger than Savage Life One or Two. Man, you ain't lying. That's my opinion. No, that's a fact. A lot of people, man, Savage Life One for sure is an undeniable classic, and all that shit got recorded in the Motel Six. Damn. Like I said, yeah, a lot of that shit wasn't getting recorded in real studios because TML used to try to seclude them purposely to make them work because otherwise, you know, when you're popular in the city, you're going to just run around and do whatever fuck you want, you know? And that's another reason I had to leave Baton Rouge too because things are almost too accessible. When you get to a certain status level, a certain level of power, you can either abuse it or you can do the right thing with it. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of always try to stay on the right side of things, but at the end of the day, you know, we know guys that can make things happen. Wow, top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Top three are Pac. Pog number one. Pimp. Pimp number two. <sighs> 3,000. 3,000 number three. Love your top three, man. It's a hard top three, man. How can people get a hold to you if they're trying to link up with you? M-O-B-B-G-O-D-C-O. That's on Instagram. Twitter is M O B B G O D Mob God. Everything else Mob God. Wow. Yeah. Um, if you could go back and change anything that happened with you in the past, within the last, say, when you were younger, when you was that, that little young dude mm -hmm. um, starting the music, what would you what would you change? Uh, I probably would have kept a job a little longer. Okay. Okay. Financial literacy as well, because I sometimes we look at like jobs like it's a hindrance, but you have to get to a certain point where you can walk away from that job. Wow. First couple of times I walked away, I probably wasn't ready to mm. walk away, but this last go around, I, when I finally walked away from regular jobs and stuff like that, it's been about six years now. But you got to get yourself to that point, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for coming on Boss Talk man, on the one man. One, we, we we live over here. You can come back. You family now. Yes, sir. Once you break the mold, you hear it's like, damn. People be like, how can I get in? It ain't no way in. It's yeah. just it's spiritual. <laughs> yeah. Here. <laughs> and even the conversations we had before the, you know, the the podcast was dope. That's how I knew it was gonna be a good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I ain't nothing like boss talk one on one, man. Yeah. We just we just talking from under the tree. Yeah, I call. And I, I honestly watch the show. Do you? Oh, I even you like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's different when, you know, if somebody just sent me up here. Shout out to GDP by GD, the way. GD, my boy. Shout but, out but, to GD, but what did, what did you what did you think it's when you just, seen boss talk? You like that, that whole whole? I was always watching anyway. Really. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a podcast kind of guy. Yeah, but like we come if I'm, if I'm we, we from the South, man. Yeah, but you ask good questions, and you engage the people, and it's not the typical one too. And then it's always a little more fat, like the old dudes say, yeah. a little more fat on you. Yeah, head. yeah. It's always something to be taken from the interview. Man. You I, say some good stuff. Man, I be talking, man. man I'm from under the tree, some, man. Yeah, I ain't man. no you regular be, nigga, man. Was, even last interview, I was just sitting over there. What you like, this nigga wild. You said, uh, something <laughs> about assimilate, association. Brings about assimilation. Boy, that was heavy. That's real. That's so real. <laughs> because because re relationships go a lot further than money, and I tell people that, especially in this business, you know, People are pay to get in certain people's presence, right? Yeah, yeah. And you won't even have what they looking for to look at. That's right, that's right. But if you got a relationship with somebody, I'm like, hey man, this my dude, this my dude, I want y'all to hook up and what, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's and the way that's, I do it. I really don't like doing it no other way. Yeah. That's probably why I've been like this the whole time. Like if I didn't really rob with you, I don't really rob with you. That's how I am even with music. I don't want to just do music with anybody or just do music for the sake of saying, yeah, he gonna pay me, no. It got to be worth something or you got to fool with somebody that I already fool with or somebody that I believe in, believes in you, then let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's got to be kind of like a referral thing. Man. And it keeps the energy clean, too. Thank you so much, man. Mob God, I'm going to respect you and call you Mob yes, God sir. because that's what you change your name to. Yes, hey, man, check it, man. Hey, man, make sure y'all like, subscribe to this dope channel, man. We trying over here at Down South, Boss Talk 101. 
uh, listen, man, say, man, I know y'all don't want to see this in, but it about to go down, man. Mob God and came through and blessed the podcast, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. <laughs>